All right, so hey, thanks for coming. Uh, I'm Peter uh, from Sensel, and I'm gonna show you the morph. Um, and kinda, it's, it's cool because here at Perfect Circuit, we've got kind of like a lot of esoteric and interesting things, so we can kinda get in deep in some of the, uh, some of the weeds and some of the really like uh, interesting areas that I like. So I guess I like to show this app. This is a Max patch that I did. Does anybody use Max MSP here? You are nodding your head vigorously. Um, <laughs> um, so the, this is a visualizer I did. So we have a, um, in beyond like these overlays, uh, which send MIDI and keyboard commands and gaming commands, uh, you can also use the Surface just as its sort of bare technology for multi-touch. So this kind of gives you an idea of how sensitive the thing is. I'm just sort of dragging my fingers over and you can see that there's you know, usable pressure coming up on this visualizer. Um, and we can see that each finger is independent. And we also see that the, uh, it's a grid of independent pressure sensors that sort of accumulate to create this image. Um, and so that's kind of what all the black and white lines represent. And it is actually, this is actually accurate. It shows about 20,000 sensors on this. Um, so you can also see the colored circles on this indicate the identi identity. Uh, and so I'll just throw down three fingers here. And the cool thing is, is that it maintains its identity. So I lift one up and the orange disappeared. I put it back on and it's like, oh, it knows, hey, that was still orange. Uh, so it doesn't sort of cycle back to the, through the identities. Um, it's able to identify the individual touches. So this is just really the, the root of the technology. And from all of this information is what we use to be able to create the, the overlays. Um, though I really just like using that bare information because you can see that's very entrancing. And this is uh, just for the sound, sound design and for the, uh, you know, the, the patch heads. Um, we can see what, what's coming in here is we have the Sensel object. And what that does is it outputs just a, a spew of information about each touch. And it tells you the, um, you know, the location of it, the, how hard you're pressing. Uh, it actually tells you the, the sort of angle of it. So it determines the ellipticality of that, of that image. So you can actually do gestures and things like that. Um, it gives you the box size. So you have like a, which is a little bit of a different parameter than just pressure. Um, so it's, you know, it gives you the idea of the size of how big that contact is. Um, and then the other cool thing about this firmware is you can see how it's, I have my fingers very close and it's still detecting separate contacts. Um, so it's pretty sensitive in that regard. And once I really kind of bunch things up, then they start to merge, but it's still have those things really tightly bunched and it still knows that, oh, there's four individual things there and is able to track them. Um, so all that image is, all that's coming out of this. There's also a, um, what we call the force image. So let me go ahead and make this bigger. So when I put my, just my whole hand on it, you see there's sort of this blur of a hand and now it's trying to detect individual contacts from, you know, that pressure. And what we call it, that's called what the force image. And it's kind of like a, a heat map or topology, topography or something like that. You could, um, it's just like a picture, a grayscale image of what's being pushed and how hard, you know, the elevation of it. Um, that's also information we get in Max uh, through uh, Jitter, which is their image processing uh, or matrix processing side of things. Um, so I use all, use all of that to create the visualization, to generate notes, and then I just, you know, I'm done, I'm done at that point and I'm just gonna drop a VST in here. <laughs> and in this case, I'm using the uh, Quanta uh, from an audio damage, audio damage, uh, which is a super cool um, granular synthesizer, um, and so you can see how my uh, X and Y out to do one voice here. You can see that X and Y is scanning through, and then um, and then pressure is I think uh, doing an oscillator mix down here, but. You know, just kind of, it's all sort of determined by a matrix and you can easily take those gestures um, and apply them to different, you know, parameters in the patch. So uh, it's a really 
kind of straightforward sound design um, in Quanta, and you get really rich and dramatic sounds from it. <laughs> this is just a, and the sample that I'm using is a recording from the Oberheim SEM emulator from Arturia. So, you know, it's really just a whole mix of things in here. Um, so that is that, and oh, also it's worth noting that what I'm doing is taking all of this, all of these touch data and turning it into MPE. So it's a polyphonic MIDI standard. So that makes it easy to apply to the, to the VST. Um, so let's quit that and address what, was, what brought us into this room, which is the question is, what's the deal with the editor? And how do you make your designs? Um, so that is the Sensel app. And that's sort of the hub of how you, you program the, the morph to, um, to work with all of the different overlays. Um, and so you can um, you know, sort of form them how you want. So for example, let's try a really basic thing. You get the, you get the piano overlay, you put it on, and um, let's go to, let me think of it. Let me just open up Equator. Uh, why do you want that? Oh, right. This isn't my computer, that's why. Um, and wow, that would be nice if it just worked. Now I'll probably have to configure this and go to MIDI settings, MPE mode on, uh, Sensor Morph, and audio. Probably need to send that out my interface. Uh, whatever. Okay, now we have sound. Great. Um, so we're playing this, and we want to we want to turn it into an MPE thing because out of the box, this just sends regular MIDI channel one. Um, you know, it's and it does send after touch, um, and you can do the nice bend as well. So that oh, that all sort of works out of the box. Um, but let's say we want to actually do MPE stuff, so we have polyphonic control over our gestures. And all we have to do is go to Add Overlay, and we can select the MPE version of the piano. So that's just kind of a, a macro. But of course, um, you can uh, just go ahead and select any item on an overlay and then modify what it sends. So up here, these are sending uh, MMC for you know MIDI machine control for play, stop, record, and that type of thing. If you want to change that to a note or a pressure controller um, or whatever, you just change the sort of class of control. Um, you know, if we wanted to say maybe make that undo, uh, we could make it a keyboard button and have it send um, Z. And in this case, because I'm on a Mac, it would be Command C. And let's flash the LED and then send map to morph. So now, instead of record, that's gonna undo in any app that I'm using this with. Uh, so that's pretty cool that you can mix MIDI and keystrokes and kind of make a more productive environment out of these things. Um, so I figure that's probably, you know, also maybe of interest, you know, this is a MIDI note button. Um, I kind of like, you could also do, make this a MIDI CC slider, so this could be a Instead of a piano keyboard, these could all just be sliders for mixing um, or for VST control or something like that. Um, I kind of like the MIDI XYZ pad as a general class when I'm working with MIDI. And then anything I don't want, I can just turn off, right? So instead of, um, instead of you know, making it a horizontal or vertical slider, I just like to think of it as an XYZ class and then just turn things off. And that's just working. That's not global, though. That's working with what you have selected. Right. One, so here's some productive secrets <laughs> that are not obvious. So you can use, thanks for asking, you can use Command A to select all. Uh -huh. And then so that way you can quickly assign everything to one class. So, so this, everything on the bottom is, is able to be globally. Yeah. So now everything is an XYZ. So now everything's an XYZ pad. And now everything is assigned with a root note of um, F4, <laughs> because that's just what happened. Um, 
And you know, this is something I like to do if I, you know, if I'm, you know, say I want to modify, you know, these 16 sliders, I'll select them all, set them all to the class that I want, select the bass note, and then just change the note as I go go along to each one. Um, so the way you can do that is you can hold down the command key or control on Windows and then just start clicking and then that will select individual um, pieces and it highlights the ones that you've selected. And now I can turn all those to say a keyboard button and now those will be keyboard buttons and I can assign them all A. So now I can have a word typewriter where the only thing I could say or type is the letter A. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> um, so yeah, those are some sort of, um, I don't know, basic examples, but I think you're all probably clever people and can extrapolate from. I, I thought I was clever. I know, I know, I know. You, you've been having your issues, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> Oh, don't tell everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it reflects poorly on me, too, so, you know, it's a shared experience. My wrestling match was more, yeah. So, um, yeah, so let's see. I'm going to go ahead and send piano bitwig. So then the other question was that really brought us in here was what about the overlay designer? Um, so I think we kind of have a handle on how we would program any one of these overlays to do whatever we want. Um, but then we have this very clever um, overlay, which is blank. Um, and uh, once you put it on, it recognizes that's the innovators overlay. Um, we can scroll down on our overlay presets over here. And um, if you don't, if it's not showing the innovators overlay in yours, you just have to, again, add overlay uh, and click on innovators, and then it's going to give you a blank slate. Um, so again, this is a little bit different than, say, the drum pad. See up here, there's at the top, there's not any uh, buttons. We can go to the Innovators Overlay Custom Design. Now we have these Layout and Map buttons. So Layout is, what do you think that does? <laughs> it lays it out. Um, so you, here's where you add your shapes and your controls on your surface. So I click Add Area, and I can you know, sort of resize it. You know, make it a little bit bigger. I can duplicate that, and I can duplicate it as much as I want. We have grid snaps according to dimension. Uh, everything's like in units of millimeters um, because it's a superior measurement. <laughs> <laughs> um, and <laughs> you know, so we can organize our our uh, tiles here. You know, if we want, we have different shapes. We can do uh, oval and hex, hexagons, um, and you know, we can change the color and you know, sort of organize these things as we as we like. Um, and no, you can't select one and hit delete. You have to press the delete area down here. Um, I apologize for that. Uh, and then you can do, you can actually layer them if you had some sort of weird ideas, um, and so you can have things in front and end and back of each other. So I'll send this one to back. So you know, this one would take precedence over this one, and you'd sort of have this area of um, overlap. Um, may or may not be useful, worth knowing. <laughs> um, so yeah, once you've made this totally cool interface, oh wow, look at that. Look at what we just did. We made a, a grid of 64 tiles. Um, and these are all MPE and isomorphic and um, technologic and whatever, recreational. Um, you can export your 2D or 3D file. Um, so you can save it as an SVG, a PNG, or STL file. And so the reasons for an SVG, I usually, what I do is I'll, I kind of just do all the layout in here, and I'll export it as an SVG, bring that into Illustrator or some other um, you know, vector program, and just make it look nice and clean. Um, so I, actually, could you, since you're the closest, can I ask you to bring that um, overlay from the Korg mini log? Yes. Yes, thank you. Um, so you, know, you can add borders and, tight, and labels much ni more nicely in a, in a drawing program. Um, so this is, a, this is a good example of that. Um, 
where I did the, the colors and added, you know, nice type and fonts and added some little instructions and stuff. So it was clear that you could, you know, when you walked up to it, this is what it was for. Um, and uh, yeah, so that was, you know, using the SVG. Uh, PNG is nice for like if you just want to do a quick print. So you save it as a PNG. Um, I'll put that on the desktop. Um, uh, I'll say this as Sensor Custom and save. And so now I can just open this up in, oh, that's the height map. That's interesting. That's new. Ah, here we go. Here's the actual image. So you can see it's those colors that I put in there. Um, and then you can just print this if you don't. And as long as you don't scale it, it'll just turn out to be the right size of the overlay. And then you can cut it with scissors, and you have your own custom controller. <laughs> How could the paper has to be a certain thickness? Mm, or? No, you could use cardstock. Um, and you could use, you know, this is just regular office paper, you know, from a regular inkjet. Um, there are some other interesting opportunities. Um, that I have not fully exploited, but I've started testing. And um, here's a couple examples of those. So this was done using the service um, Ponico, which is a laser cutting service. So you just send them a 2D file, and then it, hey, how are you? And uh, it, you know, it'll burn the, uh, sort of engrave the surface into whatever material it choose. And they have, you know, a variety of different soft surfaces. Um, and so this was kind of a test of, you know, there's our grid. Um, and then I sort of just used some reg readily available silicone adhesive to attach this thin layer of foam to the back to make it just a, a little bit squishier. Um, and now uh, when I go to the, uh, uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and load the grid 64 on this morph. And here's another trick. Since this does not, this doesn't have the magnets, and I'm not using the, the innovators overlay, um, we can still get it to work it, by using the no overlay. Again, this is the add overlay, no overlay. Um, and here it just gives you one big area, and you can sort of say what you want that big area to be. In this case, it's the innovators overlay. So when I send that to the morph. Um, I now have an MPE. Uh, it's a nice custom surface with a different feel than you'd get from, you know, maybe the sort of like weirdly fetishistic silicone. <laughs> um, so yeah, there we have a custom controller done within 10 minutes. Um, well, OK, that took a couple weeks for me to get that. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it was really easy to make that file and get it, you know, just send it off to the service. service. Um, so that is the, any questions about the innovators overlay or what we can do with it or what its limitations are? Or, yes? So you mentioned, um, like, it, it knows, like, the orientation of, like, your. Oh, your yeah, stuff. yeah. How do you connect that to parameters? From you don't. Um, you don't with so with uh, our sort of standard, you know, overlays. That's not something you can really. It doesn't really make. It would be too weird of a thing. <laughs> that's something that comes through the API. And our API, like I, I was showing that in Max, yeah. using the Max object. Um, the API is also available in um, in Python, C, C sharp. So you can use it in Unity for you know gaming development. Um, and uh, or visuals too. There's actually some really fantastic examples on um, on GitHub. There's a link someplace out there. <laughs> um, there's a, a guy who was doing a bunch of visualizers in Unity just using the API, and so it's just like doing these really cool feedback um, and uh, you know sort of color blobs, and it was you know just just sort of finger painting in Unity with, uh, with the Sensil Morph. And it was like <laughs> a very different use and very compelling. And he put them all up on GitHub. So um, I could actually get that link for you, I think, at some other time. 
I'd have to do a little digging for it. Um, is everybody here familiar with MPE? With um, using, a, I mean, just so quickly, like, I mean, in this case, um, I mean, we can see this is a this is the equator software from Rolly, and um, the I, what I like about this is that it kind of makes the um, modulation very visible. Let's see, I think there's a nice way to do that really big, but I don't know right now. But so that it shows you this, you know, your velocity graph and the up and the left and right on the glide and slide is the up and down and then after pressure. Um, and then there's also the lift velocity, which is sort of a weird one. <laughs> and I guess that's sort of, I guess it's kind of like maybe strings resonating a little bit differently when you release them on a stringed instrument is I guess maybe the model for that. Um, I think it's kind of interesting you can like, like you can attach that lift parameter to uh, uh, ADSR the release. So you can sort of, yeah, it's really, it's an interesting one because you can, we, you know, when you, you can do these dramatic gestures and then sort of, ah, it's hot, and then it'll, you know, it'll come off quickly and then if you release slowly, it'll just sort of, you know, decay. And it's really, like, it's interesting having all these different like gestures. velocity. Yeah, exactly, like a reverse velocity. Um, and some of these gestures, since they're not really orthogonal, it can be very, you know, because like when you're sliding up and down, for example, on, you know, on the thunder, um, it's, you're also pressing down on it too. So you, you can't really separate those. Sometimes you're just like, I'm not going to use after pressure. I'm just going to use the up and down. Um, but sometimes that doesn't matter depending on how you use that up and down. Um, because if you're just tapping it and not doing the sliding, then that after pressure is is sort of more independent of your of your um, of your Y or slide or glide or whatever they call it. <laughs> Rolly has a different name for it than Bitwig, than um, that was another one. Uh, then the like the endorphin shuttle, which has another word for it, and then the um, so they all kind of there's there's a standard in what messages they send, but not on what they're called. Um, so yeah, that's um that's kind of goes through the the editor, the overlay designer, some MPE stuff. Um, I guess maybe it's a good time for questions right now. Does it do uh, OSC? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, it does do Bluetooth MIDI, which is nice for uh, particularly for like uh, iOS. Mm -hmm. Um, because the cabling can be a little bit tricky. Um, there's also, does anybody use iPad or iOS apps? Okay. Um, there's actually a really cool feature in this. Um, so here we see in the Sensel app where morphs, you can have multiple morphs attached. So that's why there's like the morph section and it says 16, 17, and you can read the serial number on the back and it's the last four digits. So, so if you had four of them, you can, you can differentiate. Um, there's this interesting checkbox down here that says slow charge iOS USB. And what that does is it means you can um, attach directly to an iPad and uh, without having to have a powered hub. And so it'll use the battery on board to sort of to sort of take just a minimum amount from the iPad and the iPad doesn't say, hey, you need more power. <laughs> so it kind of, the cool thing about that is it just sort of reduces it down to your camera connection kit and your USB cable, and that's it. You know, you don't need the powered hub. You don't need to plug into the wall, and you don't need another hub. So it kind of cleans up that connection a lot. Um, but it's a, little, it's a little bit of a, a hack. So if you're not using that, you kind of want to leave this thing. You want to leave this unchecked. Um, and anytime you make a change in this area, you always need to send those settings to Morph. So you need to click this button up here. It's always charging. It is. It is. But if it's if you have this clicked, right. then it's gonna be charging super exactly. slowly, and then you'll wonder why your battery's never, never like uh, full. So, um, yeah, and it has a battery meter here. This one's good to go. Um, and let's see. So, do you folks use like Ableton? Some of you use Cubase. And um, okay. I mean, what are, what other things are people using here? Like. <laughs> Not no software. No, no, one's using no one's using anything. <laughs> I mean, I use Logic. You use Logic, okay. 
Um, Logic has, um, we actually have like kind of an, a lengthy video on, on our site. So let me, uh, let's go ahead and, oh, I don't think I'm online. Um, but it's like central.com slash videos. And we have some nicely organized videos. Um, there's a tutorial on like the many ways of logic in the morph. It's like, um, shows you how to use the, uh, the environment, <laughs> actually go into the environment and show you how to like parse things by channel and make it so that, you know, when you swap an overlay, like if you put the, the drum overlay on it, it will play the drum track. And when you, and now this is obviously not MPE stuff. Right. Um, it's single channel. When you put the piano labor on it, it'll go to the keys. So you can, you can really tighten up your, your experience that way. Yeah. Um, and so in Bitwig and Live, since we have, does anybody use Bitwig here? I would encourage you to look at it. And then maybe I'll show you some stuff. Um, actually, I have an example that works with this Moog that's kind of fun. Um, so working with Live, you can use these things just out of the box, you know, as they come with the standard MIDI. And now these are set up with some different things. The, the top buttons kind of change. So it allows us to switch tracks using the arrow buttons. Um, and it automatically arms it, uh, so I can change my drum kits. And you're not getting anything over there because I have to change to the Steinberg. And there we go. Um, so yes, configuration is so fun. But, okay, so we've already sort of found a very fun feature of this is that we can pitch bend our percussion. Um, and I can go ahead and add a clip to this. Um, and I can play the thing from here. I can turn on overdub. Uh, I should be able to turn on overdub. There we go. Um, and, oh, I need to launch this clip which is hard from the drum pad, so I'm just gonna do it manually. Uh, and now I can. Add another clip here. Launch that. Oh, I gotta turn on overdub again. <laughs> So yes, now we have ah, I guess you need to turn on overdub every time. <laughs> mm. So yeah, now we have a nice little music creation environment is sort of the, the crux of that example. Um, and you can kind of get a little bit more control here. Um, there's also some kind of clever things here. Um, so instead of having sends on knobs, you have, um, I can use my pressure controls here and use those to control the sends on. So, and that's kind of standard across all of these. Um, this one's kind of fun. Um, so, you know, the sends are wobbling and I can do that. It's like a momentary thing. It's kind of more performative than using a knob and setting it to an exact value. Um, but you can actually lock it to a value by holding this shift. So there's all kinds of like clever things. It's all really well documented at guide.sensel.com. So that's kind of a quick overview of that. Um, so let's go ahead and does anybody have any questions about that setup or you're intrigued perhaps? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, sometimes like sometimes like the you know, like I did, I, I, the setup can be a little bit tricky because you have to import all those maps and program the morph and, right. you know, make sure of all that. So that's kind of like the sort of unsteady area, but uh, that will get better over time because we'll be able to just, you know, send all that configuration from live eventually. But So you're saying there's document documentation at guide, what was it? Guide.sensel.com. Guide.sensel.com. Yeah, so that's basically our for big... All the overlays and yeah, yeah, and particularly like the, the software setups for Live and for Bitwig. 
like the, those, the scripts work exactly the same for Live and Bitwig, so it's, you can kind of jump around between the two. Um, and then finally, this is kind of a fun example. Um, so in this case, I'm using um, I'm using a non-MPE plugin, but I'm still taking advantage of of like the vertical and after pressure stuff in here uh, because. You, there's all these concept of modulators in in Bitwig where you can drop in a you know select in here in any device. This probably looks familiar to live users. It's you know you have your device. In this case, it's a plugin host. Add a modulator, and I'll add the expressions modulator, um, which is what I did here. And then you just kind of click on these, and then you can apply them to um, a, your different parameters within the within the plugin. So now pressure is. So you can pull that gesture data and apply it to even something that's, you know, strictly monophonic, totally not MPE. But and that's using a lear that's learning. It's essentially uh, like learning a CC. It's not not learning a well, CC. Not. Well, but it's similar. It's similar yeah. because everything's again since every with MPE everything's standardized. This expressions modify saying like, okay, you can take velocity, um, which it understands, and and so that's what this little clicking on this is like. Okay, I'm ready to map velocity to different parameters in whatever. Gotcha. Um, and similar, timbre is the up and down in Bitwig. So if you want to map that to something, and, and pressure is of course pressure. Um, and and then if you do this, you know, with one of their built-in devices, um, like. Uh, we can go to a Bitwig synthesizer um, like FM4. Then when you add the expressions, they're per voice, right? So it's not just sort of taking, it's not monophonic anymore. Now it's polyphonic and that, you know that because it's green. <laughs> and, and then you can apply these polyphonic things to just kind of everything in here uh, and really Kind of design your own MPE sense in a really powerful way, and you know, and again, like in live, you can do racks and things like that. So there's um, a lot of a lot of powerful possibilities in that. Um, and yeah, so I mean, that was kind of there's the other cool thing is like again, modulation is really neat in here. I can um, take a take an LFO and quickly apply that to um, a wave shape. Right, so now, well, that wasn't very dramatic, <laughs> um, but we can. Let's just say, let's. Okay, I don't care about that. I'll just do a, you know, add an effect here, and I can add a, an LFO to, um, the mix, of this, of this effect, and. Can kind of hear that. That maybe wasn't the best choice, but let's just crank it. There we go. And then you can click on that and then change the parameters, clock sync it. Um, so that's kind of a crushing example, but it's dramatic and very easily recognizable. <laughs> so that's just kind of a quick overview of like. Number one of what's cool about Bitwig is you can has this modular modulations type of thing about it. So, um, but can you can you yeah. change, for example, the uh, the, set, the the morph is already fixed. It's set up already with, with an overlay for Bitwig. Uh, it's not really. It's more generic than that. In in this case. Um, these are using the, the live, I have the live ones map. Right. Yeah, so I'd have to go back to the app, the Sensel app. You would have to reprogram in the app to, to change To change whatever you wanted to change. Right. Now the cool thing about, yeah, so then you That's can change these. Problem, yeah, it is, uh, so in this case I'd want to go to the music production Bitwig MPE, send the map to morph, um, quit that, and then now this is using the 
<laughs> the uh, MPE Bitwig things, and now I can you know go ahead and change tracks and do all that sort of stuff. So yeah, it's quick. It happens quickly, um, but there's always that cognitive overhead, and you know it's not always the most convenient. But uh, the boot, the we kind of introduced a really cool system on the the Thunder overlay where this top the programming bar, which is in the original boot Don Buchla Thunder, there was like this strip at the top which was used for programming parameters and that type of stuff. We adapted that to be to be the preset loader. So you hold that and then you use the one through nine keys at the very top, and you have nine different scales or MIDI layouts or whatever you want on the device itself. Um, so hopefully we can roll that into our other overlays at some point, but it's not currently happening. <laughs> this is the one to do when you want to do a bunch of different weird scales and setups. So yeah, that's kind of the grand, grand tour of many cool things that you can do with this. It was free. Well, <laughs> yeah, do it in quad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it does have panning. So, yeah. That's very cool. Cool. Yeah. So what sort of, like, um, from a sales perspective, like if someone wanted to get one, did, did it come with, like, all the overlays? You buy the overlays separate? Or we products? have... So, like, I mean, pretty much it's a la carte. You buy the unit with one overlay, and that's two fifty. Um, and then there's a we have a music makers bundle. Do you, I don't know if you guys are selling the bundle or not. I think we are. But I think, okay. Have to <laughs> yeah, because it's it's funny because we kind of have our store set up in a way, and then now we're de starting to deal with retailers, and it's like, oh, well, we can't really do that. And like, okay, we'll figure this out. But we have like a music bundle where we do the three. Music overlays and this for like 300, I think. Um, and then the overlays are 35, and this overlay is 60. So it's like an extra 15 more. Um, yeah, and so you can sort of build up the set, the kit you want, mm -hmm. you know, and it's pretty reasonable entry price for pretty powerful technology. So. And the Thunder can be for anything, it doesn't have to be for a, a boot club. Nope. No. <laughs> But it is, you know, spiritually, it's nice to use. Yes. With, spiritually, it's nice to use with modular. Absolutely. Um, you could use that as a template for, for something else if you want. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Go in there and yeah. dial it up. Yeah, another one I really like to use with it just because of the West Coast synthesis is uh, Madrona, Labs Al Madrona Labs Alto, mm -hmm. uh, which has a lot of really enchanting sounds that you can uh, craft out of that. Um, and, yeah, like I said, this, you know, Quanta is cool because it's MPE and weird and granular, tons of textures you can get out of this. Um, I like dropping voice samples in this because, you know, it's, I might have one. No, not handy. But you drop a voice sample in there and you really start to hear the, the effect of granular, granularization and you, it's 
if you ever need to score a creepy cyber or zombie attack or, you know, <laughs> just throw a voice into Quanta and to, you know, make, play some chords and then you're like, oh yeah, that's it. You're done. Yeah, you're done. You're done. Is there like a master list or like recommended kind of things a la Quanta that like you guys recommend from your end to mm. play really well with the... Not at the moment. Okay. Yeah, it's something that, that's something we have in mind, but it's such an overwhelming... Sure. Thing, and there's just so many things and you don't want to leave anybody out. Actually, Roger Lynn has a really good um, collection of recommended or software that works well with MPE. Um, so he's kept that up nicely up to date on his site at Roger Lynn, Roger Lynn designs.com maybe. Yeah. 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 So does, do you know if it works with FH2? It does. Great. Yeah. Cool. So we have that. We have that demoed out there. Um, it works it, for hardware. It works with the FH2, the Endorphin Shuttle, and the Snyder Phonics Manta Mate. Um, and then there's some other ones that are unknown, but kind of guessing don't work. <laughs> um, but we're finding all those and rooting them out and getting them to fix this stuff. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to say thank you. Uh, Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks for coming.